Now we're going to um, install um, Ubuntu in um, VirtualBox. So this is the VirtualBox manager. So you go down here, click new, type in whatever you want to call it. We call it Ubuntu and then click next. It's a 64 bit. If your machine was 32, then you change it to 32 bit. Okay, so click next. Set whatever amount of memory you want for it. So a good one would be about a gig. So 1024. I'm going to leave mine at 512 because I'm just uh, demonstrating. So now it's recommended that you have a hard drive space of eight gigs for um, creating the hard drive, the virtual hard drive for inside in VirtualBox. Okay. Now if you use the existing virtual hard drive file for you'll put basically, I have Windows already set up on it. Windows 8.1. And if you go and use that, you will wipe the drive and you'll have to reinstall that. So use create virtual hard drive now. So click on that. If it's not ticked already, if that box is not selected already, select it. The second one there, virtual hard drive, and then click create. You can leave these settings as they are, virtual box disk image. Click next and leave it as dynamically allocated. And you can fix the drive, which you're better off using dynamic located. Now, solid state drives are better than your disk drives. So that's the thing you're going to have to sort out yourself. Get a solid state drive. You want to be using virtual machine. It's um, a lot um, f more friendly towards virtual box than, than disk drives. So solid state drive, if you can, get your hands on one okay so click next and it's saying here basically Ubuntu is going to use 8 gigs okay so it's set there for 8 gigs you have max up to 2 terabytes with virtual machine but uh, you want fairly large um, internal hard drive in order to do that okay so click create Now, so that's the settings set for Ubuntu to install. Now make sure that you have your DVD or your USB stick, bootable stick or bootable DVD of Ubuntu, which I've shown you earlier how to do, um, plugged in or you have the disk in, okay? And then click start, right? Or you can just double click on Ubuntu here. So host drive is D drive. It will give you the option to do it from an ISO file. Um, it's up to you which way you want to do it. So click start. And this will start the process now. This is the same way that you would um, install it if you were um, installing it um, on your actual computer. This is a virtual box, but um, it's the same procedure. So it's just loading files there now. So you'll see uh, lines coming up like this, no valid domains found in package, upgrade bias or use force adder. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but um, it's not going to affect the installation. By the way, this would be quicker if you use um, a USB stick, a, boot, a bootable USB stick with uh, Ubuntu installed on it, with the ISO file on it. Um, it's a lot quicker. I'm using DVD here. So now you're given a welcome screen, install, or just try Ubuntu. You can try Ubuntu without making any changes to your computer directly from the CD or 
if it was a USB um, stick, you you would get that message as well. Or if you're ready, you can install Ubuntu alongside or instead of your current operating system. This should take this shouldn't take too long. So we're going to install it here. As I said, you can try it here. Just click that guy, and that will show you the the operating system in on the desktop. But we're going to install it. So click on install. It's in English. You change it to your language. There's uh, all the different languages there. So has at least 6.5 gigs gigabytes available drive space. So it has, and we're going to just click continue. And this is just a message stating that it's not connected to the internet yet. Okay. So click continue. This computer computer has no detected operating system. What would you like to do? So the space that we allocated earlier on in virtual box has already been picked by the installation of uh, Ubuntu. So it's going to erase that little, um, those eight gigs that we um, allocated earlier on and install it on that eight gigs. I think it uses about two gigs of it as far as I know. So install now, um, pick a location. I'm in Ireland, Dublin. Well, I'm in Galway, but it only shows up in Dublin here. So click continue. Now keyboard. So you want, um, I want English. So I'm going to just type in I here. Let's see, does it pick it up? Scroll down. So we just find uh, UK English. So my keyboard is UK. Okay, click continue when you have that sorted out. It's slow to react because we're using a, a DVD method here, okay? And the DVD that I have is an external DVD. It's not an, uh, an internal DVD player. That's why it's so slow. But as I said, I am installing it on a solid state drive. So it will be pretty quick. So type in your name. Right, you type in your name, it comes up in the pick a username also, and then you have to actually put in a password. So I'm just going to put in my name, it's very slow to pick it up. And again, repeat your password. Now, down here you have the the option to log in automatically or require my password to log in and encrypt my home folder. We just want to log in automatically. So we're just going to tick that box there. Again, it's slow to react. It's not very quick. Okay. So click continue once you've that done. It's pretty straightforward to use Ubuntu um, for getting out online, um, it knows it's able to pick up um, whatever internet um, connection you have. Um, so most of those drivers will be already on the software that's installed. So you'll be able to get out online straight away with it if you're using VirtualBox. Um, and I think it's pretty pretty good. It's pretty good. I did install it on a desktop a couple of weeks back. So. It worked fine. You were able to get to the um, internet uh, sorted out pretty quickly. It it all installs as the software is installing. So now it's just copying files over to our virtual drive. And once this is uh, finished, I'll um, we'll be back. Okay. Now it's nearly finished there. There's plenty of support out there for Ubuntu at, on Ubuntu.com forward slash support so um any problems that you're having you will get um volunteers that will sh show you and most of the stuff 
there's a lot of good answers out there um, if you need help with any of it um, this is a more stable operating system than Windows so just to be aware of that and viruses are non-existent on uh, Ubuntu they just don't happen I think there is one or two uh, that used to be out there but they're not there anymore so it's uh, well protected from from uh, viruses it just won't let them run basically on it most most viruses and malware and spyware are configured to run on windows anyway so there just isn't a big enough community for the the, the makers of, of, of viruses to, to, to bother with, with Ubuntu because it's just not going to um, they're not going to get en enough people infected so that they can kind of make a bit of money on them so it's a sick sad way of making a few quid but you're, that there you go that's life that's the way people are so it's just configuring the hardware there now now installation complete installation is complete you need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation now if you are installing this on your desktop or your laptop or your netbook or your notebook you will have to restart you'll have to click the restart um, this is virtual box so the only thing that's going to be restarted here is virtual um, the virtual box that's running Ubuntu okay so we're going to restart now. This window is going to close down and start up again. And you'll have to press enter once it um, tries to restart. So you want to starting up again. And you'll get these messages. So now please remove the installation media and close the tray so that's the DVD tray if any and then press enter so if you were um, installing it from a USB stick you could remove the USB um, stick now so that's it so just press enter and Ubuntu will start up on in my case VirtualBox but on your case it will be on your desktop or if you want you should actually download VirtualBox it's it's a very handy tool to have for extra operating systems instead of using your internal drive to add on different um, operating systems if you want to use different uh, operating systems because virtual box is used in the actual computer so it's not actually affecting um, the hard drive as such you're, you're just um, allocating virtual memory and virtual hard drive space by using virtual box and it runs a lot smoother in virtual box than having it say parallel with another operating system so just be aware of that okay so just click enter and VirtualBox will now have Ubuntu installed so there it is on and all now right so just one more thing about VirtualBox right if you click on devices here insert guest edition CD image what this will do was it will give you the option to open the full uh, screen say your monitor so when you when you click on this guy right it, it opens with a big blank space around it and it's not very um, user friendly as it's set up at the moment so when you open Firefox you'll see what I'm talking about so you only get a little corner of the browser here you see so if you want to have um, a full window of the operating system what you need to do is we just minimize we just minimize there again and just go to devices click that insert guest edition edition CD image right 
So this has to be set up in your virtual box. You will probably have done that if you have another. Um, it shows you in settings. So basically, you'll have to set up this to um, guest editions. You see this guy here, storage, secondary master. So th this would be set up when you set up your um, virtual box in the beginning. OK, I'll be doing a, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do a video on that as well at some stage. But um, so we're, we're going to go back here anyway and so once you click on insert guest editions cd image this guy will open here um contain software intended to be automatically started would you like to run it and you click run yes and then you'll have to type in your password whatever your password to the operating system is and then click authenticate and you will see it verifying archive integrity. This can take a few seconds to set up as well. So it's building the main guest uh, edition module it's done, building the shared folder support module. Again, these things are going to have to be done with your virtual box manager. Okay. Press return to close window. So it's finished there now. So let's close the window now. In order for you to um, view the changes, you have to shut down or restart the um, Ubuntu in VirtualBox. So we're just going to shut down and we'll click on restart. And that'll restart it. Again, don't be worrying about those. So now you see how the window has changed its size in VirtualBox. Now, in VirtualBox, now you can maximize it and have it the full length of your screen. Okay, so you'll be able to check out all the settings. Scroll down here at the side or the, the bottom. Okay, so you'll be able to see everything. So it'll be at full screen now. Okay. So again, that is devices, guest, insert guest editions on CD images, okay, so that you can use that feature. So that's it. Um, it's a very good operating system. Uh, of course, it's free as well. So try it out and see what you think. As I said, you can use it from the DVD direct. You don't have to actually install it and just see what it's like. It will have all the features that you need to check and see if you like it or not. So I hope this has um, helped someone out there thinking of changing from Windows or Macs. It's a not. It's a, Ubuntu is a, is a is a faster um, operating system. It has got less problems with it, and it never gets a virus. So there are things that you may find interesting or not, um, it's completely up to you. So that's it, thanks.